Good morning, everybody. Today, I will be presenting the training of the intercom system of Saphir. This is the second generation of the Sapphire intercom installation or products. So let's move on. So the second generation is a perfect solution to, to a perfect harmony of between design and innovation uh, with high efficiency. Let's go first to the modular systems. Okay, in, we have this main module with the camera and one button to call the apartments or rooms. Okay, the first model is um, in wall and the other one is on top of the wall. And then we have a separated main module that can be in various uh, mountings. And then the other one is the two wire. It looks all the same from the outside. Okay, here below we have the model numbers that you can see if you want to order one. Um, <clears throat> this um, one for the, the this service model, for example, or, or the flush mounting uh, model, you can also use in the uh, modular system. So in case that we are having a lack of stock of the normal one, you are the other one, and then you can save the uh, the, the frame for later installations. So. Then these are the standalone or the all-in-one units with the model numbers and the specifications. By the way, all the modules can work on uh, power over Ethernet, except the two wire, because you know, the power goes over to the two wires. Okay, let's talk about the sub-modules. We have one sub-module that has six buttons. One with a keypad, one blind module, one reader. This could be for MyFair and the EM uh, cards. We have a display. We have uh, another display that shows you the status. And these are the model numbers with specifications. And we have also a new one. That's a blind one. This one has illumination at the back. So, for example, if 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 this situation is for a uh, hundred apartments uh, complex, you cannot add uh, all the key modules because um, <clears throat> the sub modules are limited to eight. So, on each main module, you can connect up to eight sub modules. So, in case of a apartment complex of hundred or more or actually it should be uh, 49 or more. You need to use a keypad and uh, on, on the system info, you can write down the information how to use the system or the phone numbers or the apartment names. So we have also brackets because we have uh, an installation to do. So the first one is for the, for the monitors to add them at the desk. Then we have the built-in brackets for one module, two, and three. Also, we have um, rain covers or extra protection for one, two, Three, and these are only for the uh, on the wall modules. This one we have also one, two, and three. Here are the model numbers. So let's talk about the two wire system. Oh, by the way, if I'm going too fast, just let let us know in the chat, or if if you have a question about something that I didn't explain well enough, please ask. Because I, for myself, the first part is uh, pretty boring, but you need to know because you need to know what options you have for this system, right? So, okay, uh, let's continue with the two-wire system. So, first of all, we have the hub M2, right? The M2 is to connect all your devices, like the main door unit or the monitors. So. Then we have also the hub 2. The hub 2 is to connect only the hub M2. 
Later on in the training, I will explain how to connect. Then we have also the standalone uh, two wire systems. This one do, does not need any help. So I was getting powered via the monitor and it's going a wire to the outdoor unit. Here are the model numbers. So let's continue. Also, we have um, more different complete modules for, again, up to 500 apartments. So the first three are uh, the models that are in the market for more than one year. The other two, the 126 and 127, are new on the market. They're very affordable as well. So um, the first one is with keypad and the with face recognition. The other one is with um, also keypad, face recognition, and card reader. And the 126 is with um, the fingerprint reader. Okay, let's continue. The standalone modules. I said standalone models because they can also work um, standalone directly calling to your mobile device. And also, it's possible to connect any other monitor to this outdoor unit. So the first one is the standard one. The second one is Vandal Proof. Here are the model numbers. And then we have also this model that's for uh, emergencies. For example, in an elevator or somewhere that it's very uncommon to put an intercom, but you need to have one because they need to um, get out or they're stuck in some places. Then another three. These are standalone models, intercom, and access control. Okay. So the first one is also with face recognition. In the database, you can record the faces to have access, fast access. Very nice, it works very good, and it's very reliable. Even a picture doesn't work because this one has two cameras, so it will definitely uh, it will recognize in 3D the face. Right. Also, you can use it, uh, the, the fingerprint and the card reader. And the second one is a more robust with card reader, call button, and the last one is with finger reader, uh, fingerprint reader and card reader. Here are the model numbers. So the monitor lineup. We have one, two, three monitors that looks the same, different configuration. And then we have the nice model. This one has a TFT display. That means you can look at the screen at an angle of 178 degrees and has a nice uh, key to push the door uh, for opening the door. Now we have also a 10 inch model and we have another 10 inch model with Android operating system. So let's go back to the to the left one, the first one. The first one has got uh, Wi-Fi and IP. By the way, all of the models are, except the two wire one, a power over internet. So the second one is only IP, so no Wi-Fi. Why there is two models, okay? It's quite simple. Because if you have a big apartment complex and you have like 100 or 10 apartments, um the main building doesn't have internet access, but you want to do a call forwarding to your mobile. This is where you need to use the Wi-Fi connection. The same for the two-wire module or monitor. No, I'm sorry. So and the rest of the 10 inch also does have Wi-Fi built in. <coughs> Then there is also a master station. Um, this for most Northern European countries is not very common, but in some countries like Spain, they have a concierge in the building so they can monitor the alarms and also contact uh, or the, the uh, apartments can contact the concierge on this uh, model. 
So then we have also the kits. The first one is a two wire system kit. It comes with power supply hub. This is not the same hub as the one that I showed you before because this one has only four connections because it's it's a kit for in general a, a villa or a chalet where you have you where you can connect a uh, maximum four devices so one is the outdoor unit and three screens the second one is an ip kit it comes completely with a poe switch then we have the two uh, the one is on top of the wall of course then we have the other one that was also mentioned in the standalone, it comes also in a kit with a monitor, and then we have the bigger one with one call button as well, and the other two wire standalone system where you can only connect one monitor. And the last one, my favorite, is the one with face recognition, uh, fingerprint reader, card reader. It comes also with one monitor. And if it's all clear, we're gonna show you the easy step installation. Four easy step installation. Okay. You have here the, the, the wizard with the language it shows. Then you can select the HP or set an IP address. For these easy installations for the villas with only one monitor and one outdoor unit, just let, let it on the HP. In general, it will work. Sometimes not, but depends on the um, internet configuration or the network in that particular villa. Um, I need to send backwards. Um, also, in step four is then to select the um, outdoor unit. So the image of the the camera is 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 big. It's got a very wide angle of 180 degrees and vertical it's almost 100 degrees. Next step is you can connect it with a Sakai Connect so that you can also receive the call on your mobile. Okay, what do we need to know before we offer anything or what do we need to have for this, for the installation? So is it a new installation, old installation? Does your old installation has two wires? And in general, we recommend to use IP solutions for a new building because then you are a little bit more flexible. Even though you can combine the two wire system with the IP, this is all possible. So then does it need to be on top of the wall or inside the wall for the brackets? to buy is it apartments or a single home family uh, single family home yes so and what are the um, the the, the sub modules that you like to use for this configuration so for example um, in this image we see uh, three apartment building and a main uh, gate so in this case um, you can you need to decide what kind of system you're going to use so what is the max okay the max is up to 500 apartments up to eight main door units and up to eight sub modules per main module okay. each apartment can have up to six monitors and all the apartments can have is own outdoor unit as well so this very flexible and i would say top of the line i bet you can use this almost in in, in any in any situation so now we're going to talk about the uh, two wire and um, the ip distance of wiring okay <clears throat> this is also something that you really need to uh, be aware of okay so for the for the monitors it's 50 meters depending on on the type of wire that you are using and uh, the first one let me get the first one as an example is with the 18HWG wiring um, it's up to 50 meters but if you use sub modules 
is up to 35 meters because it is using more powers power. So for the for the Poe uh, modules, it's the same, but the distance is longer. This is also why I said before, if it's a new installation, you better use the IP system because there is a longer reach. So and, and the last one is about the the wiring and the monitors with the hubs. Okay. I will I will pause this a little bit. If you want to like uh, or if you like to make a screenshot to save it, this also is by the way available in our knowledge center. Later on in the training, I will show you how to get there. Hub wiring. So here we see two different type of hubs that I discussed before. We have the hub two and the hub M two. The difference was that the hub two, you cannot connect any device, only the hub M2. So like you see in this drawing, so on channel one, we put the, the connect uh, to the in of the M2, then the out of the M2 is going to the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and the next one. So it's basically, it's unlimited. So up to 500 apartments, right? So let's continue. This is a sample where to connect the main module. You always connect the main module on the last channel. Why? Because the last channel has more power. I believe it's 18 watt in total. So that it will be able to power all the sub modules that is connected to this uh, main module. And you see a little sample of the master unit that is connected to one. You can connect it also on six, but then you will not be able to connect the main module. So, and the last one is a sample for the monitor. Basically the same as the previous one. So we're going to talk about now is um, how to add the devices in the Safia Control Center. I hope this is clear. So I made a, a little clip file that I will show you that you need to activate first the device. Okay. So you put a user, uh, you put the password, and then it will remind you that you need to do not forget the password. So second is to add the device. Okay. You give it an IP address or you use the HTTP. But in this case, or in this demo, I use an IP address. Don't forget the subnet mask to put it correctly, and then the gateway, and obviously the password. Click OK. So now the device is, has a new IP address. Now you add the device in this of your control center. Select the correct password and mark synchronized time. Let's continue. Next one, the setup of the extension uh, outdoor and monitor. So, like I said in the previous, that you can add up to eight uh, extensions uh, from the main one. So, how you do that? I will show this later on in a live demo how to configure this one. Okay, for the uh, apartments, it's a little bit easier. So I have the image here that um, in the configuration, you will select indoor extension. And then the device will do a quick reboot and you will select the number of the extension. So like I said before, you can have maximum of five uh, monitors in one apartment, uh, six monitors in one apartment. So the first one is the main module. This, the second one is the first indoor extension. You always start with one. And then the last one will be five. And then you will save it. And then the uh, monitor will reboot. Okay, how to add the sub module on the main unit? At the back of the sub modules, we have dip switches. So now if you have the, the camera on, I, I'm having here some modules connected. Uh, can we see it? 
Yes. Can you see the dip switches inside the black hole? Here, we have the dip switches. Yes. So okay. Is, yes. This is for identification of the submodule on which position it is. I have here the um, how the configuration should be. Like in the, the first dip switch on is the first unit in line. The second is the second on. Be careful because the third one is different. You need to switch one and two on. You see that there are eight dip switches. The last four are not being used. It's probably for future options. So in here, I will show you that in the configuration panel of the main unit, you can check via intercom and then submodule configuration if you have set up the submodules correctly. You will see there that the first one is the main uh, module and then the card reader and then the keypad. So if in this case, if there are only three connected, then you have a visual of them. You did your job correctly. So how to configure the module with the six buttons? Okay, you go to the tab, press, I need to look because my screen is too small. Press button to call, and then you select the sub module. Right. In this sub module, you have the option to enter any number you like. Of course, the monitor needs to have the same number as well, otherwise, it will not reach anywhere. So, and then in the last one, I show you a screen of the password settings. This, again, if you use this module with the keypad, you can use up to 16 emergency codes, like for ambulance, police, the cleaner, uh, or whatever. You can give them access to, to the apartments or to the main door. Video intercom and access control. So in this part, if you're going to use the card reader, um, you need to add users in the Safir Control Center. So within the conf uh, if within the Sophia Control Center, you go to users, then you add a company or the building name, however you would like to have it. Okay, you select uh, or you write down the name. You go to yes. Okay, when you want to add the card number, you press on the number four on the plus sign. Then the next window on top will be a pop-up window. You go to settings, and then you will go to the pop-up for the settings to select the card reader. So you can use the card reader to read the cards from the top modules. You click OK. Then you go back up. You click on read, and then it will read the card number and then you press F and the card number will show in the top of the user. So the next thing is you need to create also a user's access group. Okay, you give the user right click group a name, then you select the person for the user access group and you also select the devices or the doors that they have access to. Then you click on save. Still, you're not done because this data is only in your computer or in the Safety Control Center. So the last step is to select the user group and then apply it to all devices. This will show you a pop-up fence that it will upload all the information to the users. Any questions? Add cameras on a monitor. Each monitor can have up to 16 cameras. How we do that? <clears throat> Actually, it should be simple, but it's not that simple. For the Sapphire cameras, we need to use port 554. You give the device a name, the IP address obviously of the camera. It is also possible to use the cameras that they are connected in a recorder. Then you use the IP address of the recorder. 
add the username and the password of the camera or recorder. And then you choose the channel number. For the cameras, obviously it's always one. Unless you have a thermal camera, then you can also select two, but I guess nobody would like to do that. If it's a recorder, you can select the channel number of the recorder that you would like to see, and then click OK. You see uh, at the back that I have connected two cameras, one via an NVR and one directly on the network. Guardian Vision. What is Guardian Vision? Guardian Vision is the, the services backdoor for the peer-to-peer -peer connection. How to use it? Well, there are different ways. You can do everything with your mobile. You can scan the QR code to add the camera or device um, to your system. You can do an online scan, but the most convenient way and to have a nice overview is use this link for guardianvision.com. Uh, Log in with your credentials that you created before, or if you did not have it yet, you can also create one on that side. Once you enter, you can add your uh, devices. You can edit those devices, and you can also share those devices. For example, in this case, when we would like to share a video intercom, we click on the share button. And then keep in mind, you need to select two-way audio and alarm. The alarm is to receive the notification. If you do not do that, you will not get notification of a, of a call. And well, the two-way audio is obviously. Okay. For this um, slideshow, I am already at the end. Okay. Do not hang up yet. Okay. <laughs> because I would like to show you some live demos. Um, I also this I can Camille you if if you uh, would like to have the direct links to our um, uh, tutorial pages or support pages, you can have that. In there, you can uh, see everything what we just discussed as well on, on the topic that is necessary. Okay, um, we're here in maintenance and, and device management. Okay, so I, I'm sure everybody is pretty familiar with this part. Uh, if you wanna see your online devices, you click here, you can move this upwards depending on your needs. In this case, you see we have four active devices to inactive, okay? So first of all, I would, would like to go over my, my setup, right? So what do I have in my setup? In my setup, I have, I have here the main module, the um, info display, the six buttons, the card reader, and the keypad, right? In this whole system, I have the second one also connected to one monitor. Okay, let's go over to the monitors. So in here, we see the standard monitor. This one is with Wi-Fi. You can see it's not connected to Wi-Fi, but it's working fine with the cable. Here we have uh, the luxury um, monitor. By the way, I used an IKEA stand for this one. It works perfectly. <laughs> Unfortunately, the cheaper one doesn't work with IKEA stands, but we have the other one, right? And then here I have two that are not registered. Okay, so what's new? Let me show you this. Uh, we go to the main module, okay? So what is new? Here in device management, let me make it a little bit bigger, right? You add the new monitors or or um, you can add also add the um, the extensions of the main module like we said earlier before you can add up to eight extra outdoor units on the main one so this you're doing here so what you do is like you click on add then if you want to add an indoor station 
you use the password and this might be pretty new for everybody registration password this can or if you will not it doesn't matter it, it does not need to be the same as the the uh, the standard password so in here you enter the serial number for example if i have let me go and we move this aside for example we have here two inactive ones we can act the use the, the the serial number and the ip address and it will automatically activate and add the indoor station to the main station so let me show you here sample of one monitor so it's like this this has the, this serial number it has this ip address gateway and it has number 71 and with this one it has number 73 okay so also we can configure it or basic stuff via this window we can reboot or restore or restore all so that it will be back to um, inactive device number we can change the room number from here also the floor let me see i don't know how many floors okay 999 i think that building doesn't exist yet well anyhow we can change the network here and here is an overview all right so let's go back to the configuration there are some things you need to know about the sub modules you see i have here in this setup four sub modules i see everything is online that means that i did the dip switches right otherwise it will not appear here this is for the display module that you can uh, set the brightness name tech module this doesn't do anything card reader module this doesn't do anything keypad module this doesn't do anything going back to the name tech module like i showed you in the previous pages of the presentation you go to press button to call on the main you know you have one button if you want to have the sub module you click sub modules and then you enter the room numbers or the apartment numbers okay if if something is not used you can leave it like this doesn't matter or you use 99 there's a question yeah i sent you one <clears throat> the serial number to be inputted manually if you have to put it manually the serial number in in the device management okay yes uh, let me go back then so if if i want to add this monitor that is inactive i can look up the serial number from the back right i will show you because i have two devices that are inactive so later on i will show you the two new ones how to to edit all right Okay, let's go back to where we were with the internet. Press the call button, okay? We have main nodal, sub module. I said sub module. Okay. In here, you can add any number you like from the monitors. If it's not used, what's very common is to use just triple nine and click on save. Okay. So when in, in the in the future when you're adding apartments or something is going to change and somebody presses the wrong button not that somebody will wake up from your call right okay this link time schedule for example this is also new okay you can create your own template when the user uh, can use that button to call I think this will be never used, but you never know in, in a company, for example, you might use it, right? So let's go back. 
Mm, you have to sip. Okay, keypad module. The keypad module, you go to access control, and in here, you type in the public passwords. You see, there are up to 16 public pass uh, codes. Um, and if you think, hey, what if I'm done with the installation? and one user or one uh, apartment would like to have their own code. Yes, they can do that. They can do that via their screen, and then you go to the, the, the code, you create a code. How to use it? You press the pound sign, and then the apartment number, and then the code, and then the pound sign again, and the door will open. So let's, let's create one password. Okay, I will do one, two, three, four, five, seven. One, two, three, four, five, seven. I will save. So now, if I press, I don't say one, two, three, four, five, seven. The door is open. The door is open. See, so it's that. It's supposed to be that easy. Okay, the other part about the card reader module, what we also showed that you cannot do anything here. That's correct, how we use it. So in this case, we need to close this window. Okay, we go to persons. You see, I created two persons here. Let me open what I did, okay? So I add my name, right? And you can add any information. You can say, hey, it's a female. Oh, by the way, the system is still not gender neutral. So for people who have an issue with this, there's no option, maybe in the future. So also you can add a phone number or an extra note for this person. Further on, you can also select until what time the card is valid. For example, hotels, right? You can say, hey, this employer has a contract until this and this date. You can add there. How to add the card. You click on this part, um, this plus sign. You go to settings. You select the card reader. And you see that I have two stations here. So I have an option of, of, of the card reader one or two. Fortunately, I do not remember which one is more than which one is two, but we will find out. Okay, what I'm going to do is I, I select OK, then I do read. So now I will present it to the reader. The door. This is the wrong one. The door is open. The door is open. Okay. Let's see. Oh, it's out of. You see, now it's got the card number, and I click that. Uh huh. Okay. You see, you see this? I already add the card number, so you cannot duplicate the card number, or if it's already being used, even though if it's used by another user. But if I change this in a three, it will add, right? For some modules, you can enter, uh, especially the one with face recognition, from the kit 009, you can create a QR code. How you do that? By this. So what you do is you, you or take a photo, or you download it, and you create the image, and you upload it to your phone. The only thing you do is press on the QR code from the display, and then you'll present the QR code, and the door will open. And this works only on the outdoor units from the kit 009. So when, when all this is done, you still need to add the resident information. Okay? Bind device. You can bind it to a monitor, but I suggest just use the, the analog indoor station. In which door station is it? This or this one? In general, it doesn't matter. Just select any, any one. But for administrative reasons, I would su suggest to select the correct one. Then there is the room number and the 
number that needs to be called. Okay, in most cases, that's the same. Unless there's one room with two different monitors, then you can use a different calling number, right? And then click OK. Now, immediately, we'll see here a marking that we can uh, apply the changes to the group. I will just leave that as it is right now because I want to go to the next step, and that is access control. In access control, we can select or create templates. Here, in general, the all-day authorized template is good enough. But you can also select one only on Monday from 9 to 6. So if you are having everything configured how you want the templates to be, you go to authorization, then you go to access group. Well, in this, I have here two access groups. Okay, let me open one. So in this one, I see that I have selected two persons. And two persons are able to access this um, door, but not this door. You can add this door as well. Okay, because it's already registered in another access group, I cannot add it. This is something you need to be, be aware of, but I, I guess in most intercom situations, you will be not using this, but this could be useful if you use an access control system because it uses the same uh, part of the SAP control center. Okay, let's go cancel. And this one, you will see that I have access to this door. I cannot select this one, the same message, because I already have access to this first door. You will see that here. Okay. When everything is finished, you select the funds that are modified, and then you click on Apply to all devices. This might take some time, and you will see that everything is applied. You can also see the details. Okay. You see that number that we that we added, it's uploaded to the system, and here for the other person as well. Okay, then let's go to the part that I would like to show you how to add a new system, right? So we go here. We see that we have two inactive devices. So what I would like to do is, first, I will activate the main module, okay? So I click here, activate. I create a password. Then I need to confirm the password, click OK. Still, we are not there because it's not here. So what I need to do is now, no, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot one part. <laughs> First, we need to change the IP address, OK? That make it easier for me, the HTTP. OK, now I can edit. Username is always admin, and then the password, synchronize time, and add. So, now we go here, we go to device management, we click on add, okay? So we create a password. I put here a different password, now the serial number. So we, we can find the serial number here, right? So, you see, the screen is still inactive. I need to assign it an IP address, okay? Gateway, and this will be door number 99, right? If you're watching the webcam, look what is going to happen. You'll see here it's offline, okay? We wait a little bit until the, the screen is rebooting. Okay, you see now, the screen has been rebooted. It has number 99. And if I refresh this page, it is online. You see, no more activating or adding the device in Safir Control Center. Everything can be done via the main module. In this case, I use this one, okay? So in general, if I'm lucky today, if I press this one, it says calling failed. 
Why? Because we didn't program the button to be calling number 99. Let's go back to configuration. We go to intercom. Then we go press to call button, and there is 99, save. So if I did my job very well, I should call. And you'll see it's ringing. Let me show you my screen again, okay? So what I want to show you here is uh, the Guardian Vision website, okay? I log in with my test account, and over here I will see my devices that I have online. If I would like to share my doorbell, I go to this icon, share. I type a name here, okay? What, what you will, you can use whatever you want. No, I need to have an existing account. Okay, I'm sorry, I was not prepared for this. But anyhow, if if you select the account, you need to add the alarm and the two-way audio, just like I showed you in the previous slide. In here, you can also see your other shared devices. You see, I have another device that is shared by another account. To my account so for example if, if this is a doorbell and from my neighbor or my sister or my parents and if somebody calls it will ring on my phone as well um, here are the devices that i already shared and this you cannot see any shared devices okay there's actually one more thing the it's interesting to know, yes, definitely. Okay, let me go to this intercom. This is the 112 with just only one button and a card reader. This model, and also the smaller model, the 111 and the 105E, you can use without monitor. So what is important to do? To set up the network. The network, Platform access needs to be active. Well, in this case, you see it's active. <clears throat> it's active on, on the moment on my phone. So if, if I, okay, if, if I press this one, you will see directly here on the top corner. That it's ringing. Okay, I press, okay. I show my face. But anyhow, you see it's running in, in general if you pick up with your, uh, Face ID, if you have face ID, then you can pick up the call, right? Um, so this part is very important to enable it. Be aware, this model also ha comes with two buttons and four buttons. Do not sell this, they will go directly on your mobile. The, the, the part that, um, or if somebody always wants to have a call on their mobile from each button, then it's a different story. But if you sell this to a four apartment building, do not activate this. People should use the call forwarding in their monitor. So in the monitor, let's take one monitor. Let's take the 71, okay? We go to network and we go to cloud peer-to-peer -peer and we enable here the guardian vision, okay? We set a verification code, one, 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 the A, A, A. Okay, we click on OK, and then we save. Okay, refresh. Okay. You see here in little gray, it's online. Now I need to have this one registered. So I am copying this one, and I go to the web page, and I go back here. I will add the device. It needs to be always nine. Why it's not showing? Let's go in the network configuration. Okay. Sometimes it has to do with the DNS, and in this case, it's already there. Let's pick up this one from the 73.
Okay, should be good. <clears throat> ah, here it is. I click on the plus sign. I need to enter the verification code and device. I can give it a name. Okay. I click auto. Okay. Now in the application, I need to refresh or close the application if you already have it open on your phone. And then it should be there automatically. And you see, it's over there. Then um, I would think would like to thank you all for joining this training. In every case, you have any questions, please write an email to support or just give us a call. And we try to uh, answer your questions or go to our website and go to the knowledge center where it is you go to technical support and then you will click here on knowledge base and here you have it you have here all the articles you would like to see now in this case you go to video intercom and then you select uh, the brand and you see at this moment we have 46 articles if there is something that you cannot find, you can always use the um, the model number that you need to find information. For example, uh, the VI112, enter. So he, here I have all the articles that is specifically for this model number, right? You see here the article, how to attach uh, for the question to come back on if you can do that on the um if you can watch the outdoor unit 24 7 yes but via the nvr for the second and last time i would like to thank paul and tors for assisting me in the chat because unfortunately i cannot do all the same time and friday of course at the end okay let, let me so, let me have a little shot of my fine colleagues Hello. 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 <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. you all. Thank you very much for uh, joining this this course, and I hope to see you for the next one. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you for watching this video. If you want to know more about our security products, subscribe to the Visio Tech channel and activate the notifications to always stay updated on the latest videos.